Good afternoon, Salvador, Arthur, and Judith. My name is Mike, and with me today we have Bill and Caitlin. And first off, thank you for being with, with, with us today. We have a fantastic presentation for you. You're in, the, you're in the business of protecting people and protecting people's investments. Today we're going to protect your investment and your business. We're going to show you ways to improve sales and improve your top line growth. And also look at ways to improve and reduce costs, improve your bottom line growth. We're going to give you a new strategic direction so that you can take your company, which is a good company, and make it a fantastic company. So let's get started. So what is the underlying problem we're currently facing? And what we really need to do is determine a strategic direction for D4 Williams. And you've asked for a five-year plan. Well, we're going to give that to you. We're going to look at three areas that we think you should really capitalize on in your, are your core competencies. That is your brand, strong brand reputation. Next is your quality of human capital, your people. And last but not least, the quality of service you provide for your clients. Our recommendation for you is to form strategic alliances with commercial real estate developers within Edmonton and surrounding area. Now we'll go into more detail about this plan, but first I want to pass off to Bill who's going to go through some analysis and alternatives to show you how we got to this point. Thank you, Mike. In order to determine the, the future for uh, D4 Williams, we have to look at some of the current conditions currently facing the firm. Uh, the staff turnover we have right now is relatively low. You have a lot of employees that have been working for you for over 10 years, so that can help increase productivity. As well, there's a high dependency on government regulations. Um, with the sprinkler installations and with the fire installations as well, you know there's always consistently going to be a demand for your product. So take that into consideration as well. Uh, right now, the market economic state is currently growing in the Edmonton and surrounding area, um, looking at 150 kilometer radius. And as well, there's other different market segments. Uh, for instance, the sprinkler, the sprinkler installation, there's a 468 million uh, dollar contract around the Edmonton surrounding area. In, um, we to your current offering. So great market potential for you to increase your revenue and increase your uh, value to firm. As well, the competition in your, in your areas have been increasing the last couple of years. Uh, the competition ranges from anywhere from like one to six competitors. It's been slightly increasing the last couple of years. Your revenues have slightly declined. But with that, that, that hurt as well. Uh, the target segment, segment, your current customers are focusing on new restaurants and new restaurants. Uh, the body plan you have right now is relatively small. You've been fo focusing on um, Sprinkler installation and, uh, and servicing as well, as well as um, fire protection and also the for fire, or the, the hood fires in the, in the restaurants as well. Um, so with that, our current conditions, our summary is that the, the, the current customer needs and government regulations um, provides an opportunity in a growing but highly competitive market. Um, so with that, I'll go over the current financial situation of uh, D4. Uh, right now, the sales have been increasing, um, albeit with increased, increased competition. But your net income has been decreasing every year. Um, as you can see, the gross margin and the profit margin starting in 2009 have been um, decreasing every year. The profit margin in uh, 2009 went from 9.4% to 5.2% to this year 4.2%. Um, so with that comes an increase in efficiency as well. Um, currently, you're not utilizing, utilizing your resources effectively. Um, right now, you're losing money on 120 of your 390 or 125 of your 390 customers. Um, that represents a huge problem for you, and you have to make sure you, you utilize that and uh, fix that problem. And as well, your debt to total assets. Um, right now, your assets are basically being funded by that $2.4 million of debt that um, that loan you have to take on. Um, so you don't have any equity right now, which prevents the problem. And as well, you haven't paid um, any principal off that loan. You've just been paying interest payments, which is a, a huge long term problem for your firm. And with that, I'll go into the alternatives. The first alternative we have we've identified is to acquire Shackleton Fire. Um, the impact of this alternative is that it's a complementary business. Right now you're in the fire protection, and as well that is their main specialty. Um, so be very complimentary to your firm and um, great way to increase um, some contracts. They're also a financially healthy company. They have no current debt. Uh, they have um, net income of around $100,000 last year. So again, a great, uh, great firm to partner with. Um, as well, there are some biasy concerns for your firm. Right now you don't have a lot of, um, of cash. And as well, you have that $2.4 million debt. So obtaining a loan from the bank will be uh, really tough. 
And as well, the, the company was valued at uh, one point three million dollars. And using using the normalized net income non-financial method, um, the valuation we proposed to was uh, one point zero five uh, million dollars. So therefore, um, the current asking price is relatively high. And with that, we feel that they're currently overvalued, and that you should um, and you don't have the current adequate capital to finance this operation. So therefore, we will not accept this alternative. So with um, alternative number two, we're going to partner with Shackleton. The impact of this one is going to get many cross-selling opportunities um, with the after services with the fire protection. Um, the only problem with this one is Shackleton's interest in the merger. You're not going to gain, you're just going to gain additional um, servicing. You're not going to gain any relatively new customers. Um, and so those are interests. Like they're going to supply customers to you, but they also have some interest because you're both doing fire protection and they might take some customers away from you. As well, there's limited um, long-term growth opportunities um, with them. The company is making a lot of money right now. They're uh, matching around. Uh, the most profitable segment is the sprinkler installation, and we feel that that's the one you should focus on, not the fire protection. As well, um, decreasing company sales. Um, right now, their sales have been decreasing every year. Although they're earning a higher profit margin in their company, um, and they have a larger customer base, their sales have been decreasing every year. So with that, we feel that due to the dopeness of Shopkins interest in a merger and the company's decreasing sales, this opportunity is unattractive. <coughs> And with that, we'll talk to our number three, um, which is a strategic alliance with commercial developers. And we're going to focus on uh, real estate and other segments um, that have greater um, opportunity for decreased revenues. The effect of this one is you can get into those new, new potential segments. We're looking at the real estate commercial development. Uh, we're also looking at going into hospitals and other, um, and other different segments to improve your revenues. And as well as launching the core competencies. Right now, you're making the most profitable segment of your business is the sprinkler, or sprinkler um, implementation or construction, uh, installation, sorry, and um, we feel that that should be the focus of your business. And as well, it's, it's low risk. Right now, you don't have to make, you don't have to invest much capital. You're just going to be expand, expanding into, um, you're not going to need any additional funding. And as well, it's going to become at a minimal cost to you. And the only negative impact of this one is the downsizing. Right now, we have a lot of um, Unused capacity per se, we have a lot of employees um, that are doing redundant tasks and they can be more efficient. So, with that, we'll decrease your costs, which will decrease, which will lead to uh, increased revenues, or you can increase revenues. And with that, this is the alternative we selected because this option offers the lowest risk while capitalizing on the strength of done for loans. And with that, I'll bring up my two colleagues, Mike and Caitlin, who will now discuss the implementation plan. So, before we go into the details of the implementation plan, I just want to provide you our vision for Tafora Williams. We see DeFore Willing as being the leader in uh, providing quality fire safety systems in the northern Alberta region, growing in not only top of line, but also bottom line. And we're going to show you ways that, uh, that hit, hit all those points. So in the first 100 days, a really critical time for your organization to implement this strategy and move forward and really grow and expand to what you truly can be. First and foremost, we think that it's really important that you define your organizational values. Where you're going, what are you about, and where do you want to go? We've suggested a potential vision, but we think that you need to adapt something that's um, well-defined for all of your stakeholders of the organization. And from there, we also think that it's really critical that you consult with your staff right at the very beginning. Get that buy-in, make them recognize that you are looking at making changes, and it's going to be beneficial for everyone, and how they can be involved in the process. So we see this done first at town hall meeting to discuss the potential changes, gather some feedback from them, and move from there. We also recognize that it's really critical that you come up with a debt repayment plan right away. You're facing a lot of debt, so any growth options do present some risk when you're carrying so much debt. Right now, your interest coverage ratio is about um, 0.188. We're suggesting that uh, with increased sales, you can certainly invest more into repaying your debt. Right now, you're just paying the interest. We really need to uh, start paying some of that principal down. And so we're suggesting um, some shuffling of your current finances, such as reducing um, your salary as currently to pay down some of this debt and decrease the risk. Um, and we're suggesting this because we are going to be able to reduce some of the some of the tasks that you need to do on the sales side of things. So we're suggesting paying back up to um, about half of your net income each year to really get that principal down so you can move forward and look at more aggressive growth strategies in the future. We will present an analysis of commercial real estate developers in the Edmonton area. 
with the prioritization of who the best partners would be right off the start, so you can strategically um, create those partnerships in the best firms first and move from there. And also, we're suggesting creating a new position, and this would be that of a scheduling officer. You're not utilizing the full capacity of your staff right now, particularly those of the installers. And so we feel that with a scheduling officer, they can begin to identify some, some opportunities that you can utilize your staff better. So from there, that after this first critical time, moving to the short term, we're suggesting that you implement a distance range fee. Right now, uh, you're not charging any fees for travel for your employees. We feel that this presents an opportunity to, to start to uh, make some money off of those customers that you've been seeing a loss on. So we're suggesting something fairly reasonable. Um, within a certain radius, we're suggesting 20 kilometers, there'd be no fee. And beyond that, we're looking at a fee of 40 cents per kilometer. We're also suggesting that you utilize technology. Now that you have this schedule processor, how can you use them to the greatest advantage? And we're suggesting that that's through technology. First, obviously, GPS in all of your units makes logical sense. Where are they? And how can they get to the jobs the closest? So that you're minimizing that travel time to really um, utilize the time most effectively. We're also suggesting different mobile technologies. Your smartphones and apps and that sort of thing, you can do it in a really cost-effective manner for now. We believe that there are better solutions in the future, but we really want to be um, mindful of the cost at this point in time for your firm. Also, we're suggesting a training program. As we implement some of these changes, and also, as we mentioned, this technology, it's important that your staff know how to use it and use it effectively and efficiently. So these training programs will help them understand how to use it and also have a better understanding of what these partnerships agreements are and how they're better for everyone. Now we'll go out to the partnership terms. These are just the total board suggests in terms that we ask you to uh, look at. Uh, with the four Williams, uh, with a commercial developer, it's going to be instrumental that you are an exclusive fire systems partner with a developer uh, with a minimum one year inspection, once a year inspection with the developer. What the developer gets is a 7% discount on the installation and the products and also a 5% discount on the payments. Now going into our medium term, uh, the first thing is develop the apprentice program. So like Caitlin had mentioned, developing partnership uh, opportunities with uh, local trade colleges is going to be uh, a great approach, not only giving back to the community, but at the same time developing the future uh, installers for your business. Uh, next is evaluating the product line. You do have currently a small product line. Looking at potential new product lines that are uh, complementary to your existing one is, uh, is going to be a, an important aspect. And last but not least, is continually uh, maintaining and developing your supplier uh, relationships with the um, with the uh, the commercial real estate developers. Is, is going to be really important. Um, so, so what does this mean for your company in terms of financial forecast? Um, right now, with the current utilization, right, um, the sprinkler installations, you're going to get up to 25% more um, utilization of your current employees, which means in addition of going from relatively eight installations per year to 10. So it's an initial $400,000 of revenue for your company. And take that into consideration. Um, the expected growth of the forecast in the, in the regional area we predict around 12%, which will increase um, to $3.31 uh, million. And with that, your gross profit will increase to $1.56 million. And after, uh, as Caitlin mentioned before, um, with your salary cuts and with getting rid of some of the selling, um, selling staff, the, co the, the, the cost of the sales salary is going to be roughly 6% of the sales. And with that as well, the capital expenditures for the GPS and for the new uh, products to complement uh, the implementation plan. And with that, um, net, new, net income with the plan is going to be $534,000, which is a, a, a substantial increase from the $107,000 that you uh, previously had realized. With that also, we calculated a boom and a recession plan, both to give you um, just a, a, a range to show you um, what you have in consideration. And with that, you're still going to realize at least $500,000 in profit, which is still a, a substantial increase over the $107,000 that it was last month. So we developed the timeline to bring everything together for you. Right off the bat, you really need to start your change management 
create that awareness of the change and get the buy-in through the town hall meeting that Caitlin uh, talked about earlier. Hiring the scheduling officer, getting the process of making your scheduling more efficient, right off the bat, need to do, and analysis of potential um, partnerships and partnering companies. We're going to help you do that um, right off the bat. Going forward, purchasing the uh, implement uh, and implementing the technology of the GPS and the mobile technologies, um, and then creating the adventure program later on, continually doing the installations and the search. For some future considerations, uh, we want you to look into a feasibility study of an ERP system. Uh, it's going to be an upgrade from your current system right now with the scheduling officer when you have that urban capital look into something like that. Annual planning retreats, continuing that on, and including other members, uh, potential managers and, and number level managers, so you can have that succession planning. Uh, look at potential acquisition opportunities. Shackleton isn't an opportune um, choice for you right now, but that in line, you can reassess and look into Shackleton again. Monitoring regulation changes, obviously, this is gonna be really important to see what different uh, government legislations are for fire safety and fire code, and looking at complementary service lines to, uh, to boost up a new uh, registry. So with any major implementation plan such as this, there could be risks that present themselves. A few that we've identified and some mitigating factors that you could consider. First, in terms of your capacity. Obviously, you're not using your current staff um, as well as you could, and so we feel like there's some opportunity there. But if you get more contracts than is feasible right now, we're suggesting, first and foremost, focus on the key profit drivers. Where's your highest margins? And focus your staff there for the time being. While you develop the succession plan, which we suggested through the apprenticeship program, and also bringing your managers in on the key planning strategies of your organization, so you can really foster that growth into the future. Insolvency, obviously, as we've identified, you do have some major debt that you're carrying. And with this growth strategy, we feel that you can increase your revenues quite significantly. But with the debt repayment fund, paying, we're suggesting around half of your net income each year to really bring that principle down quickly. And also looking at continuous growth opportunities as we've identified in future considerations. Staff resistance, you've had your staff, many of them have been there for over 10 years. They've gone through an acquisition, actually two of them with your organization. So the change management plan throughout this is going to be important. So as we identify, communication throughout the process and really making sure that they're being involved in the process and have input to really move your organization forward. So how are you going to know if this plan works? We've identified a few key evaluation metrics we think you should be looking at. First, utilization of your staff. Right now, in some cases, you're looking at 50%. In other cases, you're looking at around 70%. We feel that an 80% utilization of your installation staff is certainly feasible for your organization and something that you should strive for. We recognize that there are times that you're going to have to use your staff for other tasks, so 80% we think is, is reasonable. A relative cost decrease on the overall of 2%. We've identified removing some of your sales staff and allowing your commercial developers with those four partnerships. There's your sales right there, so you can reduce some of those costs and look at increasing your referral network through that network. Also, in terms of your relative costs, we suggested decreasing your salaries at this point in time for now so that you can pay down the debt, pay down the debt your organization is facing. Also, we're looking at four new major installations. This is on average about $200,000 for your organization. So it presents a really lucrative opportunity to increase your revenues. And also, partnerships with new real estate developers, we're suggesting at least three uh, at this point in time. So with that, I'll leave a summary slide up here for you and invite my colleagues up um, to answer any questions that you may have. Sure.
there is certainly going to be added um, additional revenue streams through other sorts of segments, but you're still going to, to have some of those restaurants as well um, in the future with this plan. Okay, follow up on that, maybe supplier travel choice for you. Um, the development Thank <laughs> you. 